I can't even send back soup. So English, yeah, English is tricky because there are countless idioms and weird expressions based on things that aren't related to the actual conversation. And so because of that, I can imagine you thinking, is this an idiom that I should learn? I can't even send back soup? Is that a standard expression? And usually, <laughs> yeah, it is. But in this case, no. No, it's not a standard expression. From my point of view, as a North American, it's a really easy concept that she's talking about. And just in case it's not clear to you, I'll explain uh, what she's talking about. But keep in mind that it's not a set phrase. It's not a set idiom. She's talking about ordering food at a restaurant. In North America, there's an unwritten rule that when you receive the food that you ordered, that it should match the level of quality that you expected based on the restaurant or based on the description in the menu. And if it doesn't meet your standards, if it doesn't match what you were imagining, then there's an unwritten agreement that you could ask to, to have the food replaced. And if that food is replaced because you don't think it is what it was supposed to be, then the restaurant is supposed to bring you out something different and you're not supposed to be charged for that first thing because you didn't eat it. I guess the idea is, well, it was the restaurant's fault, so they're going to take responsibility for that dish. So anyone can technically do this in North America. You can, you can do it. But the reason that Rachel says, I can't even send back soup, is that it's a really uncomfortable thing to do. So while you can do it, it takes a lot of bravery and a lot of, um, like a really strong conviction about what you feel. And then, of course, you may also see in TV uh, shows and movies this joke that, you know, if you send something back and then they bring you a new, like a new version of it, that the people in the kitchen might be unhappy with you and unhappy about your complaint. So they will like sneeze into the food. Um, or they'll spit into the food. This probably doesn't happen, or maybe it's happened once or twice. Um, it's just the way that we imagine, oh, what's going to happen? Like, we're not supposed to say these things to people. I don't want to hurt their feelings in the kitchen. They're not going to like this. What are they going to do to my food? It probably doesn't happen. But why does Rachel say soup? Well, I think that's because it's one of the cheapest items on the menu. And so there's a bit of a low risk with trying to send back soup. You know, if you got soup and you didn't like it, then I think that's probably the easiest thing to call the waiter over and say, you know, this is not what I expected. And that could be something like, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's spicier than I expected and I can't eat it. Or like your menu didn't mention that there was onions in this and I don't like onions. Yeah, you could do that. And I guess technically most restaurants are going to honor um, your request to send the soup back and to not pay for it. And that's really easy because it's such a cheap item. And that's what is important to underline here. Okay, one time I was having dinner with a group of 10 colleagues from work. And one of the older guys who is about 100 times cooler than I will ever be, he ordered fish. And when he got the dish and he looked at it, he knew that he didn't like it. And so he decided he was going to send it back. And he did it in a way that was so cool. Instead of being loud and making a scene and drawing attention, he called the waiter over really quietly and said, This fish is not good and I won't be eating it. And I thought it was just such a great way to handle it because, of course, a dish like this that, that has fish in it is going to be a lot more expensive for the restaurant to make. So to send back a fish dish is like a really big, bold move to make because you're asking the person in the kitchen to admit that they didn't cook it well enough and to make another one again. And that means that the restaurant is going to have to make a second piece of fish, but they're going to have to pay for that first piece of fish. The restaurant is. They're going to lose money, all because of this unwritten agreement that says that the customer should be pleased and that the product they receive should be exactly as they expected. Also, I think there's something about the preparation of soup being so simple that... 
to send it back wouldn't hurt the feelings of the chef. Um, if somebody didn't like the soup, then perhaps that was because of the soup itself and not because of the way the soup was made. The only real way to make soup is to make it hot. Uh, but when you're making a fish, there are so many ways that that could go wrong. You could say, I guess you could say a different menu item, something from a menu that was uh, really cheap. You could say this, um, just like Rachel said, and it would make sense no matter what you, you chose. I think the listener would understand what you're saying. So you could say, uh, for example, uh, breadsticks. So if you were at uh, an Italian restaurant, for example, uh, you often get breadsticks at the beginning and they're like free and they don't cost the restaurant much to actually make. So you could say that too. Like, I can't even send back breadsticks it gives the same idea to the person who's listening. They're saying that like, even when the stakes are really low, even when there's very little risk um, to me, and even when it won't um, harm the restaurant financially or won't um, insult the chef, uh, I still can't stick up for myself and say, oh, I don't like this. Are there any grammar rules? I don't really think so. Um, you can freely conjugate this. You could talk about yourself not sending things back, or someone else not sending things back. Is it a common expression? Not really. I mean, first off, the situation, the actual feeling that Rachel is expressing here isn't very common. But when that feeling comes up, when you want to tell somebody this feeling, I think most people would be more direct in this situation. And they would just say like, oh, I can't handle confrontation like that. Like, I don't know how you do that. That's amazing. Something like that. If you want to try it, go for it. Again, if you choose to say this, it's not one of those unusual friends expressions that we sometimes hear. In other videos, I've warned you, like don't say things like no snap in his turtle. Nobody will understand what you're saying. In this case, because again, it's not an idiom, um, people are gonna understand what you say, yeah. Have I ever sent back food? No, not once. <laughs> I think I'm a lot like Rachel in this scene, except that like I don't have rich parents and they didn't just cut off my credit card. <laughs> but no, I've never sent back food, especially because I know that whoever cooked it in the kitchen will hear that I don't like it and I don't want them to be upset. Not upset with me, I just don't want them to be upset. I don't want them to feel sad or disappointed uh, or embarrassed. But you can do it if you want. Again, that's the contract when you go to a restaurant in North America. That's, that's your right, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you don't have to send this video back. <laughs> if you have any English questions about TV or movies, please ask me in the comments below. I'd love the inspiration. Thanks. Bye.